thanks for inviting us in tonight at 11. March is officially here, and that means Indiana is about to be under a massive spotlight in the college basketball world. While things seem to be trending in the right direction during this pandemic, bringing a bunch of people into central Indiana, it's a little risky. So let's kick off tonight's big story with a look at how local leaders are planning to protect everyone. Indiana is about to be the center of the basketball universe. Just look at the schedule. It is packed. Teams and thousands of diehard fans will travel to the Hoosier State. We're excited that the tournament is coming here, but we certainly recognize that there is some risk. And so we're concerned, of course, that things could uh, get out of hand if they're not managed tightly. Dr. Brian Dixon with the Regan Street Institute says the teams have a strict and cohesive plan, staying in a bubble-like environment but fans are left with somewhat looser restrictions. There is sort of uh, less uh, upfront controls for the fans, which is where a lot of the concern comes from because they're coming from different places. Uh, they're not necessarily getting as much testing as the, as the teams are and as the staff are. And, uh, and then of course, uh, they're gonna be out sort of all over the city. The state says it will have a comprehensive testing and tracing plan for visitors. And the city says there are more than 200 contact tracers standing by. Those positive tests will be thoroughly contact traced. The other concern is transmission of the new COVID variants that are known to spread quicker. There's some concern that those variants might come into the city from the external travelers and fans who are coming to watch the games. Dr. Dixon says the tournament will act as a natural experiment. If this event is successful. It gives us a lot of hope that we can have the 500, that we can have many other events this summer. Another reason for Hoosiers to be extra safe. Indianapolis alone is hosting 99 games in 29 days. As of today, fans flocking to our city will face fewer restrictions. Indoor bar capacity increased today from 25 to 50 percent. Restaurants can open up 75 percent indoor dining. And bar top seating can finally reopen. The curfew's also been extended from midnight to 2 a.m. The mayor of Indianapolis says all of this has nothing to do with March Madness, but businesses hope to benefit nonetheless. The NCAA set fan capacity at 25% for March Madness, but some of the venues are taking those restrictions a step further. Indiana University's Assembly Hall has capped spectator limits to just 500 people. And right now we are still waiting on the ticket details for some of the larger venues. We're talking Lucas Oil Stadium and Bankers Life Fieldhouse. That is expected in just a day or two. A source tells me that the Big Ten Athletic Directors meet weekly and a decision on allowing fans inside Lucas Oil Stadium or Bankers Life Fieldhouse could come as early as Wednesday. Lucas Oil is already making changes for the tournament. Right now they're splitting up the football field. It's going to house two basketball courts that's going to allow the teams to play on alternating courts while the others are sanitized. Lucas Oil is hosting some of the biggest games for March Madness, including the Elite Eight, Final Four and Championship game. A lot of businesses are hoping to cash in with these big crowds coming to Indiana for March Madness. Here in Indianapolis, we're still looking for hundreds of volunteers to clean up our city this weekend. We know this is a huge moment for our city, a huge moment for us, especially coming out of the past year that we've had, and we want to put our best foot forward. You can sign up for one of three shifts between Friday and Saturday. We've got the link posted right now on the WTHR app. And that wraps up tonight's big story.